Hi, I'm Valentin, I work on Nix documentation, and this is another throwaway video to show how I work on Nix documentation, hopefully to lower the threshold for you to also try it out, because it's not really that hard, but the devil lives in the details. In the last video I found a piece of documentation which I think should live in a different place, and this time I want to show how I approach a situation where I think something needs fixing, uh, but most importantly how to make a change that is likely to get merged and that quickly. So let's get started. I want to move this section after the next one and I open the file where it's stored. It's in contributing hacking MD. And I'll just move that section over. That's it. Now we could leave it at that, but whenever I touch a piece of documentation, I always read through it and make sure that I understand what it's trying to tell me. But things being as they are, it's quite easy to get into a rabbit hole and change way too much at once. So before I continue, I make sure that this change is a separate commit that could already be merged as is. So let's make one. Uh, see what the change is. Yes, we just move these files and make a commit message, which explains why we do the change. Okay. Now, uh, let's see what this thing does. Uh, I usually check for at least two things. First, do I get it? And second, does it follow the documentation style guide? And content-wise, this one is very good. But <clears throat> the thing that I see immediately is that it doesn't follow the one rule that we have is writing one sentence per line because that is very helpful for doing reviews and suggestions that can, can be applied immediately. Uh, so this is the first thing that I'll fix and just collapse the uh, line breaks. And now automatically I go into the text more uh, deeply and see that oftentimes um, there's no need to use sentences and parentheses. And when I go into more detail, uh, there's a bit of language that could be improved, for instance, this sentence is a little bit cumbersome. And this one, um, I try to avoid talking to or about the reader, uh, because we're, we're discussing a matter of fact, so let's talk about the matter, um, and it's fine to use passive voice in my opinion here. This will fail in the linking phase if the other libraries haven't been built, but is useful for checking types. And um, I often see that people tend to write phrases such as you may want to. Uh, and I find this a bit weird because you may want a lot of things and we don't know that in advance. And whenever there's a direct instruction to users, please just use imperative. Um, and here specifically, this is an instruction for a particular purpose, so we can just use imperative and say directly do this to achieve that. Set this to override makes all variables in here, and it makes sense to have a colon because now comes a list. And now staring at it even longer, I notice that this sentence does more than it promises. So it says set this to allow environment variables to override makefile variables. But really, uh, it's about this little flag here, and it can also be passed to the make invocation directly. And one could consider, well, setting an environment variable permanently, but really it's to explain the mechanism and to show the make variables that we can influence. So I would rather write it as such and say, uh, run or invoke run make with e, to allow environment variables to override makefile variables and then list the ones that can be overridden. And it would be even better to uh, link to the documentation of make so we know what dash e actually does. So let's search for that. Uh 
Aha, uh -huh, there we go. We can just link that directly. And because that's such a short link text that is harder to aim at with the mouse, we should probably uh, use a longer one, the long flag. And now we have only the changes in phrasing as a separate change. And I can look at this in the diff, which is still a bit messy, but this is how Git works. I can add this as a separate commit. Now I actually made a mistake and committed to master because I forgot to branch off before starting work. Uh, so I'll do that right now. And go back to master uh, and remove those two last commits. Uh, this looks right. The last step before making a pull request is of course building the manual again and this is what we're going to do and in fact we can use this path here to look at the result. And there it is. Looks about right, no obvious errors. Here's the pull request on GitHub and the only thing that's missing is a label for documentation so we roughly know what this one is about. For some reason that label was not added automatically, so there's again something to fix, but that's for another time.